So welcome everybody back to uh, looking at physical release of Blu-rays or 4K films. I, I know it's been a while but with the Christmas period and work it's been extremely busy. Uh, but yeah, for today I think we uh, should, well, I thought we should uh, take a look at the uh, top 10 releases of this year. Uh, physical releases of this year. Uh, not necessarily films from this year. Uh, there aren't actually from any films uh, from 2021 on this list because there's not really been any... Uh, you know, limited edition or, um, you know, exciting physical releases from this year that have uh, been released from uh, of, as part of films from this year. So, uh, yeah, but still, a um, huge amount of films that I've uh, bought on physical release that were released this year uh, as part of like, uh, limited editions or steelbooks or via certain boutique labels. In fact, I could easily make another top 10 out of the ones that I've bought and still have plenty left to choose from. But yeah, regardless, in at number 10, we have Cold War Creatures. Four films from Sam Katzman, released by Arrow Video uh, a few months ago. And uh, yeah, this is in at number 10 purely because, yeah, the four films in it aren't the best. You can certainly do better uh, in terms of 50s sci-fi B-movies. But... They are four films that have never had a Blu-ray release before. They are presented really rather nicely. And uh, yeah, at the end of the day, I don't even hate any of these films. Granted, the highest rating of any of them you're going to see is three and a half stars. Uh, three of them get three and a half stars, in fact. Uh, the Creature with the Atom Brain. The Werewolf. And the Zombies of, yeah, of Maratau. And uh, yeah, the giant claw gets three stars. So uh, yeah, not an awful uh, box set at all. But again, like I have stressed in my review, you have to uh, like these kind of films. You have to, you know, know that you, when you're getting into it, you're getting cheap, low budget uh, affair. Uh, but still entertaining affair nonetheless. And uh, yeah, you also get two really nice booklets with it as well. One showing off, you know, talking about the films themselves and then another talking about you know Sam Katzman the legacy of the films and and the like so uh, yeah they're both really rather nicely done as well and you also got two posters double-sided uh, each plus some art cards and the rigid box itself is really rather nice so yeah I'm rating these um, physical releases from this year based not just on the quality of the films but also in terms of the extras that you get, either physical or otherwise, because uh, obviously there's plenty of extras on the discs. And uh, yeah, also in terms of, you know, how well made the actual thing is itself, because yeah, plenty of uh, special editions out there sometimes have really rather cheap cardboard around them. And uh, yeah, I can't stand that. So uh, yeah, coming in at uh, number nine, another Arrow video release, and it is the Digimon trilogy. And now this, granted, only has three films, compared to the four of the Cold War Creature films, but I rate these slightly higher. Yes, one of them is three and a half stars, that's the second film, but the first and third, I give four stars each. And uh, yeah, again, this is really rather nicely presented, individual cases for each film. So there's Dijamin themselves. Return of Dijamin, which is the one that gets three and a half. And yeah, Wrath of Dijamin. Again, like the first one gets four stars. And then, yeah, again, you got a really nice booklet with it. You've got screenshots from the film and stuff. And it's just very nicely thick and, you know, hardbound and everything like that. So it's just, yeah, a really nicely done collection, to be honest. And uh, again, like with Cold War Creatures, although even better because it's stylized, you've got a really rather nice solid box as well. But because this has better artwork, it's again another reason why this is slightly higher than the uh, Cold War Creatures box set. Not just because I prefer the films, but because also the uh, box set itself is really nicely presented. And uh, yeah, in 8th place, we have 36 Hours from the Premium Collection, released by HMV. And this is my favourite of the uh, releases from this year from the Premium Collection. But there have been plenty of others like Gaslight, the Setup, um, Death Trap. Uh, I think the Sea Wolf came out this year as well. So, uh, yeah, there's been plenty of great films from the premium collection, but this is my favourite of the bunch. And uh, as per usual, you get a uh, slip cover with them. And, uh, yeah, comes with poster. No, just, yeah, comes with poster, art cards as per usual. So you get a bunch of art cards, which are really nicely done. 
again if you've seen any of my other videos because i have i think reviewed most of these uh then you'll have seen these before but just quickly and yeah you also get a nice poster with it as well which yeah i always appreciate especially since these aren't by any means the most expensive kind of uh you know special editions of films they're usually between well if you get them on offer sometimes you can get them for two for 15 or you can get them for two for 25 but either way you know you're either paying 750 or 1250 but even so that's still remarkably less than uh, a lot of limited edition films and yeah this is a really really good world war ii film basically we have a soldier who's trying to be convinced that it's post-war the americans have won and uh, yeah the germans have lost and uh, yeah we're just basically trying to find out what kind of things happened during that time uh because the germans want to know what is actually going to happen rather than what has happened so uh yeah it's a really really good film so uh, yeah highly recommend it and uh, yeah in at number seven is my favorite criterion re-release of the year and that is deep cover fantastic crime drama from the early 90s 1992 i think it is uh, but yeah, still fantastic film, got a really good cast of Lawrence Fishburne and Jeff Goldblum. And uh, yeah, it's nice to see that our um, Criterion have released a proper physical, you know, hard case rather than the usual cardboard, which usually falls apart. And uh, yeah, again, you get a uh, write-up of the film itself, which is nice. And then yeah, you get certain information on the back as well. Directed by Bill Duke and... Uh, yeah, he does a fantastic job job uh, at directing, to be honest, with this film. And, uh, yeah, really, really surprised me how much I liked it. I was expecting to to like it, but not, you know, absolutely love it and make be one of my favourite releases of the year. Granted, there's not much here in terms of physically, in terms of release, but the uh, Blu-ray transfer is great. Uh, the fact it's in a card case, which is unusual for Criterion films, is also good. And, uh, yeah, the fact that it's, it itself is a superb film really does help elevate it above the others even if it isn't particularly special in terms of its release and then another arrow release although this from arrow academy is tales from the urban jungle now this features two films by uh jules de San. and uh yeah who has become one of my favorite directors of this year probably one of my absolute favorite directors of this year and uh, yeah this is a really nice double release you get both Brute Force and The Naked City. Now, these are exclusive in terms of their uh, artwork. You know, they're only exclusive to this release. You get different kind of artwork with the uh, single releases of each of them. But yeah, both four and a half stars each. Uh, I forgot to say that Deep Cover and 36 Hours also got four and a half stars each. Uh, but yeah, because I'm a massive fan of film awards, this is elevated again because of that and the fact that there's two great films in one and uh, yeah again you get a really nice hard box as well again with different kind of artwork on it and then all of the stuff on the back and you also get a really nice booklet as well which is done in a really nice newspaper style which considering film noir usually tell their stories in part by your uh, newspapers uh in newspaper interludes at times it's really nice fittingly done so uh yeah, and as per usual, you get shots from the film, or films in this case, and uh, yeah, you get essays talking about them. So uh, yeah, fantastic release. I think it's kind of gone under the radar for a lot of people, but if you're into your film noir efforts, then it shouldn't. Uh, and But if it has, then I highly recommend checking out both of those films. And uh, yeah, moving on to number five is Basic Instinct. Now, this has been given a uh, 4K limited edition uh, version. Uh, pretty sure I showed this off already, but again, nice hard box on it. The 4K transfer is great, and this is easily one of my favourite early 90s films. Favourite films from the decade in general. And again, you've got art cards with it. You've got a nice booklet with it. you also got a poster, which is currently up on my wall. And uh, yeah, you've got three disc version, so you know, you've got your 4K and then you've got your, your blu-ray and then you've got your uh, special features on the second di on the third disc of the blu-ray itself so yeah just a really really great film and uh, yeah paul verhoeven was pretty much on a trilogy of films that he made that were great obviously starting with robocop then total recall also starring sharon stone and then finally basic instinct so uh yeah 
cracking run of films from him in that era and uh, yeah like i said the 4k transfer is superb and uh, yeah really came to appreciate it all the hell more with uh, this release and the first and only steelbook in this top 10 in at number four is the speed 4k steelbook release now i absolutely adore the look of this steelbook i know some people have been a bit against it but i love it i like, like the colors the colors themselves i think replicate the film because you've got the nice your oranges of the la uh, landscape that it's set in but then you've also got the you know the um the harshness of the you know the fact they're on the steel balls they're on they're, it's quite mechanical in places so the silver and the orange just really go together then you got the characters on it you got the speed you got the bus at the bottom there and then you got the rev the uh, speedometer there as well which is, again is really nicely done and then there's that on the back as seen from the film and uh, yeah the 4k transfer is superb not just because it looks good but it also makes the action scenes look all the better because they're all practically done apart from raising a bit of a, a highway at one point uh, but yeah the explosions look beautiful in their oranges and blacks and uh, yeah you can see more of the debris when they, the plane explodes and whatever else so uh, yeah fantastic film and uh, yeah five star film by the way easily one of my favorite if not my absolute favorite 90s action film there and uh, yeah finally been given the 4k release it deserves now moving to something completely different uh, from the 1950s, I think 1956, uh, is in at number three, Johnny Guitar, another five star film. Probably my absolute favourite film that has been given a release this year. It's a bit difficult to get out. There we go. Ugh. But yeah, given a nice hard box as usual. It was released in 1954, it's two years off. But yeah, fantastic western. This is, uh, but. It's not just a Western, uh, but yeah, John Crawford is amazing. It really captivates you right from the off. And uh, yeah, looks great in terms of cinematography, uh, wholly engrossing uh, plot throughout. And uh, yeah, superb cast that also includes Sterling Hayden, who uh, I think uh, gets a little bit of a uh, underrated uh, rap really. But then you've also got War Bond, uh, Ben Cooper, Ernest Borgnine and John Carradine as well. So uh, yeah, and directed by Nicholas Ray. And as per usual, get a really nice solid book up with it. Again, talking about the film, essays, shots from the film as well. So, uh, yeah, it's a fantastic film. And uh, that alone is uh, elevating it to number three, which, granted, it's not the best release. You know, you've only got a booklet, a uh, hard box and the Blu-ray itself. But just because the film is so great and it blew me away on its on first viewing that I just absolutely adored it throughout. And, uh, yeah. That alone is enough to elevate it, never mind the fact that Eureka, once again, have nailed their physical release. And in at number two is the biggest box set of this top ten. Now, I did have some competition from two other box sets in the same series, and that is Columbia Noir number two. Now, number three and number four also came out in 2021. Now, they were great themselves, but this just purely in terms of averages and... Uh, the fact that none of these films have gotten three star rating is what elevates it because Columbia on number three I think had a uh, one three star film and let me just check oh, I have, have it on a uh, document here yeah there was one three star film in that box set two three and a half star films two four star films and one four and a half star film uh, in the number four box set, there was one three star film, one three and a half star film, two four stars and two four and a half stars. But in this one, we had one three and a half star. So immediately we were already half a star higher than two of the other films in the other two. Three four star films and then two four and a half star films. So just by sheer numbers alone, this is better. And uh, yeah, doesn't have my favourite film from the three box sets. Between Midnight and Dawn, which I think is in the second box, the third box set even, is uh, my favourite of the bunch. But yeah, this is amazing. And uh, yeah, The Mob and Affair in Trinidad are the best of the two, of the six here. So uh, yeah. Yeah, fantastic films really. And uh, like the other box sets, been given a fantastic release as well. Nice hard box. There's artwork on the front. And uh, yeah. The films themselves have been represented in really nice covers. Cardboard covers mixed with some plastic. So, But yeah, you get to see the fantastic artwork in full. 
and the fact that each and every one has its own you know physical case is again always a treat and uh, yeah i think the fact that this also has glenn ford in a lot of the films is also a bonus because he's obviously a much bigger star than several other uh, leading men in the other two box sets and uh, yeah again you get a really nice thick booklet on it again going through all the films showing them off in terms of you know shots from the film essays on screenwriting just yeah a fantastic release overall and uh, yeah Rita Hayworth in a fair in Trinidad is absolutely amazing as well and uh, yeah that's that's my second favorite of the bunch the mob is probably my favorite of this box set but yeah still second place means that the first place position must be going to a great film and it is a great film it's probably my favorite film from its director although the director has also had at least two other films released by them on 4k another arrow video release and it is of course deep red now yeah i absolutely adore this film it's uh, gone down a little bit in my estimations in comparison to his other work i think cat and nine tails is kind of slowly catching it up and obviously we do have phenomena coming out next year on 4k but as far as 2021 releases go this is still amazing and uh, yeah it was the first of his that i bought on 4k uh I think Bird with Crystal Plumage came out before this, but I'm not as big of a fan of that as uh, some of us. And uh, yeah, I'm kind of waiting for that to go down in price quite a fair bit before I buy it. But yeah, still a fantastic 4K release. Absolutely looks amazing on that format. And uh, yeah, it got a really nice poster with it as well. Now you get the standard artwork on one side, which is nice enough. But then you got the amazing looking Italian one, Profondo Russell, which is what Deep Red means in Italian, and uh, yeah, I absolutely adore that artwork, reminds me of Vertigo from Alfred Hitchcock, and uh, yeah, and it's still an, an entirely grossing film to watch, but it is be made better upon multiple viewings when you're watching it with other people that haven't yet to see it, because I already know the twist, I already know what to look for in that twist, and it's uh, amusing to me to see people watching it and Either getting what's happening or not getting what's happening or being, you know, astounded by the uh, twist that happens. And uh, yeah, fantastic film. And again, you get a nice booklet with it. Talking about the film, giving you shots from the film. Oop. And uh, yeah, talking about the transfer as per usual. Done in a really nice thick paper as well. And uh, yeah, it's just a really rather nice release. And again... You get a nice thick box with it. Now, granted, like I said, we did get Cat and Nine Tails on 4K as well. And it's not the only Arrow video release from this year. It's also got a 4K release. Obviously, Cat and Nine Tails also got a 4K release. We've also got Donnie Darko and True Romance as well. But I couldn't put everything in this in terms of being from Arrow video. We already have how many? Um, this um, Technically Tales from the Urban Jungle. And then the Digiman Trilogy and then the Cold War Creatures box set. So I couldn't really put more Arrow video in this as much as they've kind of dominated this year. There were still plenty of others from other boutique labels that have really, really done rather well. So, uh, yeah, but this year has been fantastic for physical releases, either new or old ones. And, uh, yeah, it's just been an astounding year. I've topped up 850 films total now. I think I was on like 500 or so at the start of the year. So, uh, yeah, it's definitely been an incredible year. Uh, but hopefully next year is a little bit, you know, more focused and a, a little bit better. But some of the hour video releases that have been, uh, you know, announced have not been exciting me all that much. Only really phenomena on 4K has been, uh, yeah, you know, something I've immediately pre-ordered where everything else is a bit more of a hang on and wait. But still, no idea what else anyone else is bringing out. So, you know, who knows, might get some great surprises. But nonetheless, thanks for watching. Hope you've had a really rather nice Christmas and a happy new year. Bye.